so I'm just at the airport right now. I'm en route to some training before I go to my station um, in Fort Lewis, which is JVLM. But, you know, just being here at the airport has just made me really reminisce on how I was homeless and I lived at the airport um, in DFW, the DFW airport terminal D for like three weeks. I slept there. It just makes me really grateful to God for where he brought me from, where he brought me from, where he brought me from. Uh, it's just really humbling, like just sitting here in this corner reminds me when I used to be sitting in the airport at the corner by myself and I would look to my left and right and be by myself or it might be some people sitting there, some other homeless people would be doing the same thing or it might just be some people, you know, waiting for their flight. But it was very, very lonely. It was very, very lonely. I mean, it was a one time in my life that I wished that somebody would have came and been like, come, you can stay at my house or come like somebody some saint somebody but nobody came but god was faithful he was there all along even through my loneliness and um i mean i'm telling you that was a, a lonely time for me i literally slept at dfw airport for like three weeks and before that i was like outside for maybe two weeks sleeping outside of different apartments but i would go to the nice side of town i was smart i would always try to hide myself in decent areas I remember one night I slept inside of the family bathroom in Walmart and God didn't let nobody kick me out. Like, he just always looked out for me. He always looked out for me. And this is just very humbling because, you know, now I'm in the Army. Of course, I don't have to worry about paying rent no more. I just got tired of being lonely. got tired of having to worry about doing everything, you know, by myself. Just needed a break, a come up, a way to save, a way to better myself. And this is that break, a way to finish college. So here I am. And they're about to send me to some training right now that I do not want to do and that's that I ain't gonna go too much into that publicly but anyway um yeah it's just very humbling and I'm very gracious gracious to God you know from where he bought me from you know God is faithful God is good you know this is it's such a blessing I, I mean again America is so blessed America is is very um America has really turned their backs on God in that they're very sinful and prideful these days. They don't really acknowledge God like they used to at all. They're just so scared of saying Jesus. They're so um, bent on being politically correct and not offending other people and not offending people and letting people be comfortable in their wayward, sinful lifestyle that they just basically turn their backs on God. Um, but I'm here to serve God. I'm here to better myself and serve others and hopefully be a light for them to bring them closer to Christ. If that's so, what they would, you know, if that's so, if God's calling them into the light, let's say that way. But anyway, I just had to get on here because I'm here and I'm waiting on um, the unit to send someone. They're coming to get me because they're about an hour away. So they're coming to pick me up and take me to that training that I do not want to go to. That I absolutely am like ready to get kicked out of so I can hear get to my unit because I don't have time for this. <laughs> At all, like at all, it. I am not one of those GI Jane type chicks, not in this way. But anyway, I just had to give glory to God because He brought me a mighty long way. I mean, I was homeless, y'all. I was sleeping at the airport. Now I'm at the airport. I'm in the army. God has blessed me. He's been faithful. He's brought me out. He's been with me through it all. You know, He blessed me with a job, a Walmart job, at Amazon. And every time He was just right there with me, no matter what was right, what was wrong, He'd always make a way. He's right there through the ups, through the downs. He's faithful, and he's always making ways, so I just had to give God the glory, y'all. God is faithful. I finished my AIT training. That's a whole testimony. Like, God has been faithful. He always put somebody there somebody there for me, and one person that has really been there for me that I just absolutely adore and love is my first sergeant because, I mean, I, man, y'all, I mean, <sighs> like, like, well, I put her through a lot because sometimes I say stuff I shouldn't say or I do things I don't do and I end up in trouble unintentionally and that she could have just been like you know what bump it that's what other people would do but she had a heart to help me and to talk to me and she was always she was almost it was like she was a mom to me for this time I just want her to like she was a mom for me she always knew the right words to say and everything like that to better me and it made me want to be classy it made me want to be dope and want to be like her and you know um want to better myself 
uh, really want to better myself and carry myself better and control uh, my emotions and all that. So um, I'm really grateful to God. He always puts the right person in my life. Like I'm just unworthy and undeserving. He always puts somebody there to be merciful to me and to help me and to be like, you know, no, you can't do that. You need to do this. And I thank God for those people that believe in giving people a second chance instead of like being so judgmental and being like, yo, just get them, get them out, you know. Because if they would do that, they would have missed out on some commanders, some sergeant majors, some, you know, top top of the line people. If they would have just cut people off right at the beginning when they're still growing. So I'm just grateful to God, y'all. God is faithful. I graduated my AIT today from Fort Jackson. So I'm officially a 42 Alpha. And I'm on my way to, well, I'm on my way to my unit. But I have some training first that I'm not looking forward to. So hopefully I can hear up and get kicked out of this. But anyway, God is great. God is really great. God, no, God is so great. Like y'all don't understand how great and faithful and loving and awesome and merciful and how holy and holy and holy and how much y'all need to repent and be born again, give your lives to Christ, save yourself from this outward wicked generation. Save yourselves, come out from amongst and be set apart. The world is on their way to hell. It was not made for us, but sin leads us that way. So choose Christ and turn the other way. The straight and narrow, which few do find. And I'm not going to hell. So I choose Christ. God is faithful and God is a loving God. He's also a God of judgment. So get right and give him your life. He loves the person and he hates the sin. So it's time to repent. I'm standing like John the Baptist telling you to turn from your wicked ways. Turn from the witches and the warlocks, the Illuminati and the celebrities, the sex and the drugs, the homosexuality, the pride, the lust, the vanity. Nothing can satisfy you like the love of Jesus, like the Holy Spirit, young folks. Nothing gets you fired up and turned up like the love of God. Just get up sometimes and boy, I just think about the love of Jesus and nothing can do it for me like the love of Jesus. Johnny can't do it for me. I tell you, can't nothing do it for you like Jesus. The old folks in the holiness church, you know, because I'm Pentecostal. They used to say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. And that's a holy dude. I mean, nothing can compare to the love of Jesus. No sin, no passion, not your man, not your woman, nothing. Because when you really come into the saving grace and the love of Jesus, it's like you realize that you're undeserving. It's so much bliss in the Holy Spirit that it compares to nothing this earth can offer. And we're so unworthy of it. When you really see the, when you really taste and see the goodness of Jesus. When you oh taste and see that the Lord is good and mercy and do a favor. You don't want the things that you used to want. You realize he, he could have let you go to hell, but he saved you and bought you out. And you just really fall in love with Jesus. Oh yeah. Falling in love with Jesus. <clears throat> Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever, ever done. I said falling in love with Jesus. You know, I really love him. I really love him because he first loved me. And when I was homeless, y'all, when I was homeless, because I've always, I've always been like, okay, so I, I had a loving home growing up, and he blessed me and my mom, and I traveled, I never went without, I was very blessed. Most people thought I was full, I was very blessed. But like, since I was 12, I've always walked alone, I've always been rejected, friends would always walk away from me in school, and I didn't understand it, I went through a lot. But, um, so God always had his hand on my life. I've always been blessed, but like when I lost my mom and became homeless, I went through a loneliness that I never quite felt. Because I've always kind of felt that type of loneliness because, like I said, friends would always walk away. And in society, I didn't fit in with, with the kids my age, like whenever I go to college and stuff. So I felt that type of loneliness. But when I lost my mom and I became homeless, I felt another type of loneliness. And it was just like nobody's there for me, you know, because at least I had my mom when she was alive and she, we were always together. But when I lost her human-wise, I had no one human-wise, but I had God. I was in his hands, of course I had God. But you loan for a human touch. So I felt a whole type of loneliness that I had never fought, you know, never felt before as far as no, no human love around. If you have any oversized luggages, those items can be claimed by press number three to your left by the side door. So when I say falling in love with Jesus, I mean it. I mean... If you arrived up at Delta Flight 5770... When you've been through as much rejection as I have since 12 on up, when you've been through as much hurt and as much pain, as much misunderstanding, 
God, I realized that God separated me and he had me like go through a lot of separation for a reason so that I wouldn't be contaminated by the world or contaminated by friends. I realized that he didn't have me fit in with people for a reason because they would have contaminated me. I would have maybe got lost in the world and he wanted to separate me so that I can be a light for him instead. And um, little things about myself show me that, but I'm just grateful to God. I'm humble because I am not worthy, but I love God because he first loved me, because he's faithful, because he's not like me. Man. men are so mean so hateful so ugly spirited i mean full of full of full of demonic spirits full of murder jealousy rage people are evil but when i just when i think about the love of jesus it overwhelms me i'm just grateful because i'm glad that god is not like man i'm glad that he's not judging me based on my looks based on my culture based on how many friends i have how much money i have how cool i am how not cool i am based on this based on that i'm glad that he's a god that's a loving god a merciful god and that to him we all look the same but what he honors is humbleness what he honors is humbleness he loves us all but it says in the Bible that he uplifts the humble and he brings down the haughty. He hates pride. He hates pride. And that's something that the world celebrities have really bad. Telling people to bow down and worshiping people, worshiping celebrities. Beyonce talking about bow down, the Illuminati and all that. He hates pride. But the Bible also says that he's saving the wicked for a day of wrath. So, you guys, you have to be so careful. You guys need to give your lives to Jesus that's all I'm going to preach to the day that I die. Give your lives to Jesus. Nothing else matters. Money doesn't matter to me. Having friends and people and family, that's nice. I want those things. But that does not fulfill me like being saved, like being filled with the Holy Spirit, like pleasing a holy God. Because I know one day I'm going to be standing in front of a holy God on Judgment Day. And it's going to be heaven right here. And it's going to be hell right here. And he's going to play my life back. And in that moment, the only thing that matters is, is my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Because the Bible says everybody's name that is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life shall be cast in the lake of fire. So I don't live my life based on none of these other things. I want to have nice things. I want to be blessed. You know, I want to live and enjoy. But at the end of the day, the fear of God is installed in me. At the end of the day... All that really matters to me is, am I pleasing God? Am I living holy? Am I living holy and acceptable? Or am I letting my surroundings contaminate me? And that's one thing I have to watch in the military because it's very, it's a very sinful culture. It's a lot of cussing, a lot of killing, a lot of all this. Even in the cadences, it's very sinful and wicked. So you have to make up in your mind once you live for Christ that you won't let nothing change your mind. I don't care who comes your way. I don't care if celebrities that you love come your way. You have to make up in your mind that you're going to live for Christ. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm good, sir. How long you been at Army? Um, uh, since October, since September. I just joined, sir. So where you going now? I'm going to a special... Oh, I can't, oh, the camera's on. How do I pause the camera? I'm going to SOARS. It's a training course that I don't want to go to. And then I'm on my way to Fort Lewis, JBLM. Fort Lewis is good. Fort Lewis is really good. I just yeah. don't want to go to this training course I'm going so to. So where you coming from now? Um, Fort, Fort, what is it called? Fort Jackson, South Carolina. You just basic training now? No, no, sir. I just finished AIT for 42 Alpha. Okay, then. So I just finished my all of my training. Now I'm officially a soldier. Okay, yeah. I'm retired military. Yeah. Oh, life. are you? Really? Yeah, what was your MOS, sir? I was a Yankee, 93 Yankee. Wow. Supply. Wow. I'm waiting on a corporal to come get me for this training unit it's called soars and they do a lot of a lot of everything jumping out of airplanes and a lot of stuff that i don't want to so do they come so. from Fort, Fort Campbell. yes 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 sir yes yes i mean they, they're, they're gonna get to get it out of the way and be so with it I, i'm it's getting out the way weeks. i'm getting it's six weeks, six weeks. But, but you have to make it through the first week and it's really tough really yeah. intense so i probably won't make it but that's okay they're just going to reroute me to, well, to my i don't want to make it well, you wanna make, <laughs> i don't want to make you that make it. it's too much it's a lot. It's a lot. Let me, let me tell you something. I'll talk to y'all. Bye. You know what I want to